Right now we're going to turn our attention to high school basketball and welcome in Coach Dan Williams from Mainland. Big win, 73-51 over rival Ocean City last night. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Sully. No problem, man. Were you, uh, was it tough to get to sleep last night? I mean, you must have been so pumped up after that win. It was an incredible crowd, electric atmosphere, you know, Friday night rivalry game. It, it, was, it must have been kind of keeping your blood flowing for the rest of the night. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, <clears throat> it was funny. Our high school coach, uh, when I say our, I mean John Evans and myself, um, we played for a guy named Sam Botta who made it back last night just at the tail end of the game. And that was the, the thing walking out the door we talked about was, how much sleep do you lose during the season, whether it's a bad <laughs> loss or a good win? Either way, you're up all night. And uh, yep. you can probably hear it in my voice right now, no doubt about it. We, we were pretty pumped last night, and it wasn't easy to go to sleep. You're probably watching uh, NBA highlights at 1 a.m. on SportsCenter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it was great. It was a great atmosphere last night. Um, it, it always is when it's Ocean City and Mainland, whether it's boys' games, girls' games, Swim meets, whatever it is, it's just a, it's a really nice rivalry. And uh, when you were over there, the, the atmosphere in that gym, um, there's a, a bunch of rivalries like that in the Cape, and it's so cool when you have the experience to either play or coach in them. Um, it, it's great. It's what high school sports is all about. I'll tell you what, Coach. I've been going to that gym now for six years, and and that is probably the loudest I've ever heard it in that place. I mean, it was you know I was talking to Joe Masari after the game, and he said it felt like the floor was shaking when they were dribbling. It was just crazy down there. Well, you know, that was the um, probably the Ocean City mainland game with the most on the line in the past at least decade or so. Um, now, I know there's a lot of season left. It's not even quite February, so it, it, maybe that's a ridiculous statement. But, uh, you know, they're first place in the Cal, and, and we're getting nearing this uh, the cutoff for the playoffs and, um, you know, making the Cal playoffs itself. It, there, there was just a lot on the line. And the last time, on paper anyway, we could see Ocean <laughs> City again for sure, but uh, the last time guaranteed that Joey and Angelo and Tommy are going to get to to play Ocean City and to have it be at our place was just fantastic. Coach, talk about those three seniors. I mean, they're, they're not really going to jump off the page at you when you see them at warm-ups. You're not really scared of them. Um, but they do a lot of things well. They're, they're great team players. They kind of know what they're good at, know what their roles are, and they've really set the tone for this team and gotten those younger kids to buy into the the vision of, hey, it's going to take every guy on this roster to win games, especially when it comes down to February and the, the postseason. Yeah, they they have been, particularly in the last three, three four weeks or so, just tremendous leaders. Um, Angelo, all of them really don't get enough, enough uh, you know, ink and, and all that kind of stuff. But Angelo particularly doesn't. Um, he's an undersized center who's really a small forward who, who does so much of just the dirty work for us. And it's great to have him when teams come out and decide to press us, have your center be a guy who can catch it in the middle and go create a, a three-on-two or something like that. Um, he doesn't need to catch it and look for the guard like he is the guard. So, uh, he's he's a nice ball handler. He finishes really well around the rim, as you saw last night. Um, he's very tough for a, a bigger guy to defend, unless he's a real like superior shot blocker. Because Angel is just real crafty around there, and uh, and Joey hasn't, you know, he hasn't. Everyone really gets excited when they see a small guy make these plays, but he hasn't gotten his name out there as much this year as as maybe we would all like. Um, be, and that's because he's really sort of decided that his role is to be the facilitator for our team. And he's a tough guy to keep in front. He has great vision. He finds guys. And last night, um, he had some more numbers because he knocked down those threes, which were humongous for us. But really, it starts with his getting other guys involved and his willingness to go play defense on a guy like Angela two nights ago or three nights ago and then Sacco last night. I mean, two guys – who are as good as, as we have in our conference for sure. And, and Joey did a real nice job on those guys. And Tommy's always, you know, he's always going to make some plays. He's real athletic, decent size for a guard. Um, he's a, a fantastic rebounder for a guard. He's, he's you know, he's going to show up all the time in, in the paper and everything because he just, he scores some points. I mean, um, but those other two guys really getting after it and understanding what the role is and buying into the role has, has sort of changed our season for sure. 
We're talking with mainland boys basketball coach Dan Williams. And, Coach, uh, one of the really neat matchups last night was Joe Massari against Joe Sacco. And those are two guys that really respect the game. Uh, you know, they're going to give you 110% every time. They respect each other as well. I mean, talking to Joe after the game, he said, look, I know how good of a player Joey Sacco is, and I knew it was going to take everything I had tonight to kind of keep him in check. And uh, it's just great watching kids like that who are just grinders, man. They, they just come out there, and you know they're going to get overlooked by a lot of people, but they do so many things well. And seeing that matchup unfold the whole night was just really cool to watch. Yeah, the, they, they know these kids really well in the, the middle school leagues. Um, Linwood and Norfield and Summers Point play Margate, so they've played, you know, Joe for a number of years coming into high school. They have, as well as our coaching staff, has a ton of respect for Joe. Joe is one of the underrated things about him, and um, Coach Bruno will tell you, is I think he may have been one of their, if not their leading rebounder last year as well as this year. Um, he's high energy all the time. He's in phenomenal shape, so he can play 32 minutes. He rebounds like crazy. He gets to the rim. Um, and he's a real cerebral player. So he was absolutely on our radar as the guy. We have to sort of just, you know, we can't take him out of the game, but do our best to, to slow him down some. Um, you know, of course, then uh, Graham steps it up, and he had a phenomenal night, and that definitely concerned us. But uh, we did just enough to, to get over the top a little bit, and then, then the kids felt confident. So it was fun. Coach, is there a smoother shot in the Cape Atlantic League than Donovan Graham? I mean, that thing is just so nice to watch. He he goes up for that jump shot, and it's just so soft. And when he makes a shot, it doesn't even touch the rim. Yeah, he he's fantastic. And uh, we were telling our guys when he goes left, he loves to pull up. But I didn't realize just how good he was pulling up to his left. I mean, he he can he can step back when he's going left he can drive forward and just pull up on a dime he can get all the way to the hoop he's you know he's got a career after high school for sure he's um i'd like to have him on our team i'll tell you what (laughs) who'd you have uh who'd you have to convince the guard that kid (laughs) or or was it like hey you're going to get him first quarter this guy second quarter the the seniors they did the, the um the great thing about last night was the seniors kind of told us you know joe stepped up and he wanted Sacco and Tommy wanted Donovan Graham. And um, even though Donovan scored 26 and had a phenomenal game or 28 or whatever he was, he had, uh, they told us what they wanted and it, they don't entirely run the ship, but we certainly listen to them. Those are guys who've been playing for a little while. And if they have something really, you know, that they're motivated to go do, we try and, and, you know, allow them to do that so that they're challenged a little bit. And, uh, Hey, it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> Talk with mainland coach Dan Williams, boys basketball, and coach. Uh, you might not think it's fun because you got to c- somehow scheme against these teams each and every night. But from a fan's perspective, it's been really fun watching this Cape Atlantic League, especially the national conference. I mean, you got four teams up there. You get you guys, Ocean City, Holy Spirit, and Lower. Any one of those four teams could end up as as the top team by the end of the year. And uh, it, there's some great competition in your co- conference, particularly. But when you look at all, all these other conferences as well, you got St. Augustine, Millville, Wildwood Catholic, Pleasantville. I mean, it's a really um, competitive league this year, and it's been really fun to watch the last two months. Yeah, we we talk about that, um, our coaching staff, all the time. And uh, the other night when we were playing lower, Scott Holden and I were talking about that. Just the way it shakes out, lots of years, but this year in particular, um, like that United between St. Joe's and Pleasantville and, and Wildwood Catholic, as good as Wildwood Catholic is, you know, those are certainly those are challenging games for them. That's a, that is a tough conference in that league. And then you have Millville with Mike Jones, who does an awesome job um, going against St. Augs. And, and ours is, you know, we may not have – our top teams may not be St. Augs and Wildwood Catholic and all that, but it's super competitive. And uh, it just shook out to be a really fun – fun year um there's you know uh so much left in this year though we're not even to february yet so <laughs> I know, we'll right? see cedar creek who gave us a real tough time the other night and we'll see lower again and we'll see holy spirit again and some of these teams so it's we've got a long way to go in in for what is for us a competitive conference um but it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun and and you know the the seniors put on their 
goals early on that they wanted to be in the Cal playoffs. And, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we weren't entirely sure, to be quite honest with you, what we had about six, eight weeks ago. But um, now we've got to, you know, realistically consider that and uh, take care of business here the rest of the way and see what we can do to, to get there. Coach, what do you tell your guys now? I mean, th- these are 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. They're coming off a huge win on a Friday night. They're they're feeling, you know, their their heads through the roof this weekend. They're feeling great about themselves. They're hanging out with their their buddies this weekend, that kind of thing. But you kind of got to bring them back to earth a little bit and say, "Hey, we got a ton of work to do, fellas. We're n- we haven't won anything yet. Uh, like you said, there's going to be some really tough teams coming up on your schedule. How do you get them refocused into next week and say, "All right, this is almost kind of a new season now. We, we've we've reached one goal to where we're we're a relevant team in the Cal. We're in first place in the Cal National." What are we going to do to make sure this doesn't turn into, um, you know, a season that that doesn't live up to our, our, our expectations? Well, we go back to exactly what our goal was in the beginning, and from a coaching uh, staff standpoint, our goal was to have a competitive practice every day. We we truly, when I say we didn't, as a staff, we didn't put down Cal playoffs, and we want to be here in Group Three. Because we just didn't know. We, we had lost so much experience on the floor. Our big goal was if we have a competitive practice every day, that's going to carry over into tomorrow. And, you know, hopefully tomorrow is a, a game where we're really competitive. And if they're buying into what their roles are and they're competing really hard every night, but then we can get some stuff done, I think. And uh, so it's going to be they have the weekend off because we don't play till Wednesday again. Um, so job number one is be responsible. <laughs> but, uh, Come Monday, you know, I'm going to lean on and Dan Feld and John Evans and Bobby Evans, we're going to lean on the seniors to, to go get after the younger guys and we're going to bark at the younger guys. If you <laughs> want to jump in and get playing time here, go get after the seniors and let's make Monday's practice like a game. You know, you, you might have, you might um, have to go a little bit. Bo- that same competitiveness. You might have to go a little Bobby Knight on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, 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 that's not me typically. You know, I'm not a huge yeller. I'll, I'll leave that to Edmonds and Feld. They can do all that stuff. There you go. <laughs> Good stuff, Coach. Enjoy it this weekend and uh, back to work on Monday. We appreciate you taking a few minutes. Congrats on the win last night, but there's uh, plenty more to, to, to accomplish this season. And uh, good luck to the Mustangs the rest of the way. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, So I appreciate it. You got it, man. Thanks, Dan. See ya. That was uh, Dan Williams, head coach of the Mainland Boys basketball team. 73-51 win over Ocean City last night.